As we move nearer to the Feast of the Lord's Ascension, which takes place on Thursday of this week, and Easter tide moves into its last phase, leading up to the great Feast of Pentecost, there is a sort of intensifying that goes on in the liturgical text. It's evident in today's introit. The joy at the victory of Christ seems to overflow. And the prayer of the Church on this fifth Sunday after Easter is that we should come to know, in a practical way, the implication of the liberation which we now enjoy as a direct consequence of Christ's victory. The epistle from St. James could not be plainer, giving the example of a person looking in a mirror and then going away and forgetting what they look like, drawing our attention to the essential unity that there needs to be between the faith we profess in church and the lives that we live all of the rest of the time. The temptation will always be to hypocrisy, to looking good in the sight of others in church, but not allowing those truths to shape and guide the decisions that we make all of the rest of the time. And St. James reminds us that that worship is worthless, that the truest test of whether we believe is not so much what we are doing when others are watching. It is what we are doing all of the time when only God ultimately observes us. The God who sees what we do and hears what we say, but sees the intention of our hearts that gives meaning to our words and actions. We spend a lot of time, we waste a lot of time judging one another. But of course, God alone is in a position to be judged for him. Only he has all of the information necessary to make that sort of assessment. Not only seeing what we do and hearing what we say, but knowing what we intend in our hearts by our words and our actions. So the advice today is very practical. And yet, of course, it's the greatest challenge we ever face. The challenge of coherence try and get our lives sorted out sufficiently that there is no dichotomy between the words of faith that we speak when we come together to celebrate the Mass and our lives all the rest of the time. Of course, this is one of the major reasons why the Church continually proposes to us the example of the saints, because they are essentially examples of that coherence which we aspire to. We begin today, the 17th of May, the Novena in preparation for the solemnity of our Holy Father, St. Philip Neri, on the 26th of this month. And in his life, we see that perfect coherence. He totally opened himself to the action of the Holy Spirit, and that was evident in the way that he lived his life, and particularly in the privileged way which his priestly life was a channel of sanctification for so many, not only the people of his own time who had direct physical contact with him, but across the centuries his many sons and daughters who have been called into the school of holiness, which is the oratory. Well, we ask for something of that for ourselves. That that same coherence, that same clarity which comes from a complete unity of faith and action. And we ask St. Philip to help us by his prayers and by his example to achieve that. We ask God to give us the graces necessary to change whatever in our lives needs to change. And so that we may come at length to that perfect unity, which is not only within ourselves, but with God in 
heaven. Saint Philip Mary, pray, pray for us. us.